Sadhu, Ajahn Kovilo. Um, Ajahn Kovilo's uh, winter retreat of bowing is legendary at Abayagiri because he couldn't bow in the open, so he'd find closets. And uh, people still talk about opening random cleaning closets and finding this monk <laughs> doing full-length prostrations. And uh, when we were on pilgrimage, I'd sort of wake up every morning and hear this like sort of flopping next to me. And he still, he still does prostrations every morning. So uh, it's a beautiful practice and uh, he wears it well. So thank you, Ajahn. Thanks, Ajahn. Yeah, people will be surprised how, uh, what a small closet you need to, to bow. <laughs> Not in much space. Yeah, keep us updated, people. Um, <laughs> so we have a, a bit of time now just to, uh, we have uh, several community members who have taken pretty radical steps to uh, align their lives with Dhamma. Um, Dave Getchman, who was here earlier taking photos and video for Clear Mountain, uh, basically reflected that he'd never seen a community where so many people were quitting their jobs <laughs> so and seemed happy about it. So anyways, um, there's no pressure if people aren't comfortable coming up. Um, then uh, Ajahn Kobe and I can do a bit of Q&A, but uh, I did want to open the space for um, any of those community members who have uh, quit their jobs and are um, kind of doing fairly uh, inspiring things around Dhamma, just opening the space for you to talk about uh, why and what your journeys looked like this past year. Um, and if you're coming from a monastery, what that's been like uh, or what you're looking to next. So something within that realm of questions. And do we have a cushion which people can, uh, which we could lend for the people sitting here? Uh, sort of a, yeah, that sort of cushion. Thank you, Katie. And uh, yeah, just sort of if we can keep it five minutes-ish. All right, well, thank you, Ajahn. Um, my name is Xander. Um, I've been coming to Clear Mountain for almost a year now. I think the first time was in June of uh, 2022. And I just got back from a Baigiri Buddhist monastery two weeks ago. Um, and it's really great to be back here with the, with the community, seeing the Ajahn Nisibo and all of you. The community's changed a lot since I was coming regularly in the summer. Um, yeah, just get to be back here, but yeah, so I guess I'll talk a little bit about, you know, my path and, um, I started, yeah, meditating like about five or four or five years ago and it's just been a, you know, a slow, then kind of a really fast ramp up in terms of how much I was committed, I've been committed to practicing and how much I've wanted to learn about Buddhism and the Dhamma, and I did, you know, it was mostly just in a meditation context for a while, then I, I did a couple of silent retreats um, two years ago, Goenka retreats. And yeah, after that, I, after my first one, I just noticed so many changes in my behavior and my way of, I don't know, I guess, interacting with the world, not being so reactive, not being so anxious, it was really the first thing I ever did in my life that you know decreased my anxiety substantially, decreased my you know depression and i I was just looking for more and more and more ways to better myself, I guess, and yeah, something really amazing happened after that first one where I just had this huge inclination to be more generous and compassionate, um, just I guess lifting a little bit of suffering out of my life. It really turned me towards wanting to help help people, help myself more, and that's ramped up until I, yeah, I did another one it, a week later, and after that I knew it, I was, I just thought, yeah, I have to find a way to make this my life, basically. I have to find a situa a community. Um, I have to find a community and find some monks, basically. <laughs> I have to find the experts, I guess, is what I thought on this, so. It wasn't too long after that in 2022 that I, 
came to Clear Mountain for the first time, and I think it was basically the first day, just seeing Aja Nisbo, talking to him for a few minutes, seeing Katie <laughs> on the, that, right when I walked in, I saw Katie, and I was just like, okay, like, I totally have, I found the place, like, you know, the people here are just incredibly good. There's an incredible, yeah, wholesome quality about, you know, the people I was talking with, and it was a lot about the people for me. I mean, the teachings, teachings have touched my life in an amazing way, but it's another thing, I guess, seeing practitioners who really absorb the Dhamma practice into their life, and just seeing how that, you know, comes outwards. There's a, there's a bright glow to, to so many of the monks, especially Ajanispa, and, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah. So, um, it's kind of been ramping up over the last year more and more, and you know, I had the aspiration to ordain quite quickly after coming in contact with the with monks, and uh, I finished up my last semester of school, and I just uh, came back from a Giri with a couple of other friends who were here, and that was that was pretty incredible. Just doing three months of practice, um, yeah, that was probably like the if. You know, potentially the, the greatest thing I've ever done with my life, actually, those three months. Um, just really, you know, really just totally absorbing my life for three months with the practice and doing lots of formal meditation, sitting, walking meditation, carrying mindfulness throughout the day during all the work periods, um, you know, trying to do many generous acts. And, you know, being in a monastery is incredible. It's really incredible just to be around so many, you know, so many people who <laughs> are dedicated to the practice and, you know, show the results of how that affects the quality of your mind. And yeah, I could say could say a lot about Abhayagiri. One of the one of the big things was just you see over and over and over again how you get stuck in these, you know, afflictive habit patterns, you know how for me a big one was just seeing how these thoughts of worry and you know self-deprecation come up over and over and over and over and over again and you you know you can just get lost in it for hours or days just in a single thought loop basically and you kind of can poke your head out out of the water when you're drowning for longer and longer amounts of time i guess and being able to do that for yeah, three months, you really see some some big changes. I feel, I feel like my practice has completely changed just in the three months of being able to practice at a Baigiri for free, also. <laughs> so I recommend you all go there and say hi to me because I'm going back tomorrow actually, and I asked for Anagarika training um, at the end of the three months. So yeah, that's what I'll be that's what I'll be doing <laughs> for the next for the next year, at least. So, yeah, I mean, it it, re it's, it means an incredible amount to me to be able to go forth. I mean, I, yeah, it's all I want to do in my life, just practice, practice and help other people and, you know, work to relieve the suffering and untying these, you know, difficult, difficult emotions. So, yeah, and I'm very thankful Thankful to Aja Nisbo who got me started on it and gave me a lot of encouragement. So much encouragement, actually. So, and a push. So, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Thank you, Xander. Um, for those who don't know, Anagarika is the uh, stage before ordination, so it means Ajahn, or er, Xander is heading towards being an Ajahn someday, <laughs> maybe. Um, maybe we'll get Ajahn Xander in 10 years, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge act, so um, yeah, Anamotana Xander. Um, yeah, if others want to come up, we have time.
Hello. Um, my name is Adam. I. Eat the mic. Okay. Um, I actually came originally to Clear Mountain with the intention of ordaining um, and was advised to go to two monasteries, Wat Pa Nanachat and Wat Mopcham. And so I've just come back uh, last night. At, so if anyone knows what Nisachek is, it's the practice of uh, not sleeping. Not sleeping. Um, so I haven't, I haven't slept last night, and I'm very tired, and I'm still on Thai time. Um, but, yeah, similar to Xander, I will be heading tomorrow in the direction of a Bayagiri, um, with the intention of ordaining, so <laughs> may see, see Xander. But, uh, given the context of the Dhamma talk of the, I think it's the third, uh, recollection, of time is relentlessly passing, how well am I spending my time? Um, I was thinking that my time uh, had a lot to do with, I think it's the second recollection, and I'm sorry, this might be butchering the, the actual words, but um, it's it. having gone forth, it's my life is, um, I'm reliant on the gift of strength of others sustained by the gifts of others. And living in a monastery, that's, yeah, you, your entire life is sustained by the gifts of others. You wouldn't survive without the gifts of others. Uh, and I think it's a good reminder also in daily life that it's so easy to think that you're sustaining yourself. Um, and food is such like an essential foundation. I mean, you need, like the Buddha found that not eating food letting your body waste away isn't the path and also striving to have the best foods and to to seek for the sense within the foods is also not the right path and even within food you have the gift of of sunlight of rain of earth of air that create the food and allow it to arrive to you so even if you buy something it's still a gift and for me being able to live at the monastery and observe impermanence and really have be given to so freely and easily um, has opened me up in so many ways to just experiencing the string of life as, as a big gift, um, which is a beautiful way to live and I, I think so freeing from a lot of suffering in my experience um, and has allowed uh, me to become a lot more, s I, I think I understand the taking refuge in the, the triple gem a lot more in the context of that, of that teaching. Um, and I didn't mean for this to, to be like a Dhamma talk, but I guess going to a monastery is, is yeah, you're, you're living the Dhamma, you're sitting every day, waking up at 3 a.m., eating one meal, living simply so that you can understand these processes within yourself and experientially. Um, but I went to Wat Pananacha, uh, it's an international monastery. And then I went to Wat Mapchan, which is more Thai, less Western monks, met Aja Menon, um, who's a wonderful monk. And then I, I met a monk earlier named Ajahn Medino, and I asked, and I was really impressed by him. And I've heard Ajahn Nisabo talk about some monks who you go next to them and you feel like a breath of fresh air, almost like a coolness, just like within yourself. Um, and I felt that with him, and I asked uh, to, to go to him and uh, learn with him a bit. And then I was at a very time monastery where it's really beautiful, like they get a huge meal, like every monk gets probably about like 10 times the amount of food that a single person can eat. Um, and so after the meal, you can't keep any food so all of the food goes to the birds, to the forest chickens. They probably eat more than you do because you're eating <laughs> very little. Um, and it's just, yeah, there's such a connection, that string of life going through us and all of the, the things that we're arising with. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a beautiful way to live, and I'm appreciative of all, all of you here also seeking those, those same understandings and, and peace in that. So.
Adam showed up uh, one week saying, I want to ordain. And whenever someone does that right away, you're like, okay, let's see where this guy's coming from. And then two weeks later, he's like, I sold all my stuff. I'm going to Thailand. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't know if we'd see him again, but it's great that you didn't burn out and actually are just on fire for, the, for this path. So great to have you back, Adam. Good luck. Daniel. Oh, sorry. I'm Daniel. Um, most of you guys, well, actually, there are a lot of faces I don't recognize here, but many of you guys know me. I'll give a little bit of context. Um, in 2020, when COVID hit, I um, went from being a, a normal standard ICU nurse to quitting that job and becoming a COVID crisis nurse. And this was around the same time that I was I had decided to really look into what this whole Buddhism thing was about. Um, started reading textbooks and stuff and was moving around every three months and happened to come to Washington State and um, was established in Adama by some various monastics and non-monastics. Um, and ever since then I've been sort of hopping between periods of work and periods of monastery stays or uh, personal time at home and a decent amount of traveling. <coughs> uh, so I've actually just gotten back last night from Slovenia. I was at Samanadipa Buddhist Forest Monastery, I think it's called. Um, and over the last six months or so I've been traveling to numerous countries and visiting numerous monasteries, part of which was the pilgrimage to Thailand and India with our very own Clear Mountain folks. Uh, very inspiring and to me that's one of the spacer beads on the mala for sure is to, to visit the noble ones. Um, and as of right now, um, I have strong aspirations to, uh, well, I, I guess I should say, I am making the Dhamma the core of my life. And um, this is the most important thing in my life. There is nothing that is more important than this path. And that is very clear to me and very clear to how my priorities have changed with work and all of that. Um, one of the very first things that seems to be relevant when someone becomes a monastic in a monastery is um, uh, the rules around food. And when you live on alms food, you eat what you've been given. Um, and so I'm, I'm trying to translate this quality to my life on a greater scale. As of right now, I've had some, some difficulties, some obstacles, some challenges. Um, I think most of us can say our bodies aren't exactly like we want them to be, and uh, this one is not how I want it to be. Um, and right now, becoming a monastic, uh, at least this year or at, at the moment, is not something that's been put on my plate. That's not a gift that's on my plate. And that's not to say that it's not coming in the future, but right now that's simply not the case. And I have this alms food in front of me. That's the time I've been given. But I could keel over in just a moment. Hopefully I won't because I, I feel like that'd be a little bit traumatic. But, um <laughs> but there's, there's a way of learning in the monastery 
through the taking of alms food, um, how to be grateful for what you've been given and how to make the best use of it. The, um, the chant at Abayagiri uh, before the eating of alms food is, um, I use alms food not for fun, not for pleasure. Well, I'll, I'll paraphrase. I use alms food not for my own enjoyment or not to become beautiful, um, but to nourish my body so that I can practice, so that I can live blamelessly and at ease. And uh, for me, what I've been given in my life right now requires um, requires recognizing it as a gift and requires choosing to use that as my practice. Um, I've encountered a lot of people who are in similar shoes and who, and, and I have said myself that, uh, well, you know, if, if I, this is an obstacle to my practice. This is detrimental. Maybe so, but this is the food you've been given. This is what's on your plate. And just translating that into the, the broader scope of my life, um, choosing to use what I've been given um, is, is my practice. So going around to different monasteries and traveling, especially traveling the world, and I, I also just arrived last night back in the US, <laughs> um, it is not sustainable financially, obviously. And um, I, have to, I have to work to live. And that too is part of my practice. I don't like it. But why am I practicing? Is it so that I don't have to work? No. That's, that's really not the point. And if, if that's why I go to the monastery, I am going to burn out and I am going to fail. If it's because I don't want to work, if it's because I don't like my life enough, I, it's not going to work. So this has forced me to question why I'm on this path and what this path means to me and the purification of my heart and my mind from greed, hatred, and delusion is what this path is for me. That is how to free myself from suffering. It's not to escape the ugly. It's not to run to the beautiful. It's not to create pink clouds of metta and just uh, float in those and hide from the rest. It's not, it's not like that. Um, Yeah, being, being forced to wait for ordination definitely brings about the question of why you're doing it and um, establishes the priorities. And I've seen what I'm taking refuge in and I've seen what, I'm, what I don't want to take refuge in. At the beginning of this, um, before I became a Buddhist, taking refuge in every little thing, maybe beer or taking refuge in, in any, anything, you know, pleasure seeking. And then c becoming a Buddhist and realizing over and over again, I'm still taking refuge in pleasure seeking. Uh, maybe Ajahn Nisabo praises me and, and I think, oh, um, this, this, is, this is all, all that and a bag of chips. <laughs> and um, seeing over and over again, every time that I take refuge in that, it hurts me and it's garbage. This is not what I want to eat. This is not what's on my plate that I need to eat. You know, um, I've been served opportunities to live at ease and live blamelessly, and I'm going to stop. I'm, I'd like to stop taking as my nourishment the things that will make me sick. And um, yeah, so that's the that's the priority. That's the priority. And regardless of what forum in which I can embody that, um, I'm of course, I'm going to fight to have the best opportunity to live that way, but 
those are the cards that have been dealt, and the days and nights are relentlessly passing. Um, I'm gonna play the cards. Checking, 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 checking. How's that? Okay. I really wish we had time for more voices, actually, but I think we do have to wrap things up. And uh, just thank you for the people that shared. Um, to acknowledge an obvious fact, uh, ordination right now is, is a, a bit easier for men. And uh, we hope this spring to bring in uh, quite a few female monastic teachers as well. And to cultivate that presence in Seattle. Aya Nanda Bodhi will be nearby for the summer, and uh, Aya Nyanika will be, um, we're helping uh, host her on Vashon for, um, or sorry, uh, uh, Bainbridge for the summer as well. So to bring that uh, close as well. And just to acknowledge, I think Daniel's reflection was really relevant because, you know, uh, the monastic form and path um, is not, you know, these people speaking about their their path, that direction is not supposed to um, devalue the life many people have been dealt and uh, or choose. And there's immense beauty in uh, a wholesome lay life dedicated to Dhamma. But I do find there's something very meaningful about seeing uh, people in whatever form taking these steps and really recognizing a core in their life and just rejoicing in that together to acknowledge these spacer beads uh, that is such a beautiful metaphor that Ajahn Kovilo gave us. But the Buddha said, uh, yeah, when he put that moment of taking refuge in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha on par, like three moments um, that really should be remembered, uh, taking refuge, the moment uh, of stream entry, your first glimpse of enlightenment and then full awakening. So to just recognize that if you've come here, um, if you've encountered the Dhamma, how rare that is. And, you know, that's one big spacer bead. And uh, it's a lot better than your driver's license. So just to take great heart in that, to rejoice in people who are really, uh, you know, really placing the value on this goal that it deserves. And to rejoice in all those who shared and all those who didn't get a chance to as well. And to wish them best of luck on their paths. So if we can just give three big sadhus for everyone who's, uh, for all of us really, Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. We had a few people who uh, we'll probably get to hear from another time as well. But um, since everyone's like going away right away, it's good we caught three of you since you're leaving tomorrow. <laughs> um, all three of you. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I think let's uh, begin with uh, announcements and